Hey everyone and welcome to my channel, The Reader Teacher. My name's Scott. In these coming soon videos, I'll be sharing my most anticipated children's books releases for each month. This video previews the upcoming books for the month of July. You can find my previous month's coming soon videos here. I'll be going through them in release date order and where they have the same release date, then they'll be alphabetically by title. If you just want to hear about a specific book, then use the timestamps in the description box below. I hope this video helps you to discover more children's books to add to your TBRs, and I'll be doing more monthly videos like this one throughout the year. So make sure to leave me a like, hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Let me know in the comments below which of the books you like the look of, and all the links to the books that I mentioned in this video will also be in the description below. Each month just seems to get better and better with the quality and quantity. So let's take a look at the books. First up is A Monster Ate My Packed Lunch by Blue Peter Award winners Pamela Butchart and Thomas Flintham, out on the 1st of July, and is a brand new book in the Baby Alien series. In this one, we rejoin Izzy for more hilarious illustrated school-based antics where everything that happens leads to drama and running around, and even some fainting, as she and her friends are on a school trip to a big lake. But the lake is dark and deep and a bit scary, and it's when they open their packed lunches that they know. There's a monster in the lake, and it's coming for their crisps. This series is always wild and wacky in its writing, and if you haven't checked out the other 10 books yet from the Baby Alien series, you must, as they are laugh out loud funny. Thanks, Nosy Crow, for the finished copy. I'm a big fan of the Dave Pigeon books, so to see another brand new series in the shape of Bad Panda by Dave Pigeon creators Swapna Haddo and Sheena Dempsey out on the 1st of July is music to my ears. This one is all about a panda who is fed up with being labelled cute. Everyone in the world thinks that Lynn is the cutest panda in the world, so much so that they ship her off to the local zoo to be stared at by visitors. But Lynn hates being called cute, and that leads to her doing everything she can to try to be the baddest, meanest and most uncute animal in the whole zoo. I'm really looking forward to seeing more funny fiction from this terrific twosome, so thanks Faber for sending me a finished copy. Next, we have Crowfall by Vashti Hardy, out on the 1st of July. Now, Vashti has long since been one of my favourite authors, with her superb STEM-based storytelling and wonderful world-building. And this rip-roaring island-hopping adventure looks like it's going to be much more of the same. Orin Crowfall has lived his whole life on Ironhold, an orderly island where industry brings prosperity and where nature is pushed aside for progress. But when he, a lowly servant boy, learns that his home is in grave danger, the island is dying and everyone is at risk, can he, along with his robot friend Cody, save his family before everything is destroyed? With turbulent stormy oceans, terrifying sea monsters and powerful forces aplenty, this eco-fable is one that I recommend that you definitely keep a look out for and one that is just waiting for you to dive into. I love the look of this finished copy, so thanks Scholastic! Also out on the 1st of July is The Great Food Bank Heist by Anjali Q. Ralph and Eliza Paganelli. Many of you will already know Anjali from her award-winning and best-selling book, The Boy at the Back of the Class, as well as The Star Outside My Window and The Night Bus Hero, which are written with great empathy and her trademark humour. This novella, written for Barrington Stoke, gives a child's eye view of the increasing problem of food poverty, which is getting more and more relevant. On Thursdays, Nelson, Ashley and Mum head out to the bank. But this is not just any old bank, because this is the food bank. However, the shelves of the food bank seem to be getting emptier each day, leaving people hungrier than ever. When Nelson realises there's a thief in town, can he and his friends really be the ones to catch the robber? With a percentage of all royalties earned from the sales of this book going towards Trussell Trust food banks, the Greggs Foundation Breakfast Club programme and selected grassroots food bank charities, I'm really looking forward to this one. Big thanks Barrington Stoke for the finished copy. Another one for the 1st of July is The House on the Edge by Alex Cotter, which promises to be like a Daphne du Maurier mystery for beginners. Where has Faith's dad gone? Why has he left his family living in an old house perched on a crumbling cliff top that's cracks seem to be getting bigger and bigger each day? What's happened to Faith's brother who has become obsessed with the sea ghosts that he claims live in the basement? So many questions and so many answers that are currently unsolved. Can Faith find her brother and bring her father back before everything she cares about 
falls into the sea below. From the couple of chapters I've already read of this, I'm already hooked, and I know you will be too. Thanks, Nosy Crow, for the finished copy. From the best-selling author of the Last Chance Hotel series comes the Howlin' Hag Mystery by Nikki Thornton out on the 1st of July, which is the first novel in a brand new magical mystery series set in the same world as the acclaimed and aforementioned Last Chance Hotel series. In this one, we follow Raven Charmin, who along with having such a superb character name, knows the rules of using magic in the real world and is horrified to uncover the worst kind of trickery in her village. Luckily for her, and us, as we become reunited with one of our favourite talking cat characters, Nightshade from the Last Chance Hotel series, who has a talent for solving magical mysteries. Drawing on old school classic mysteries and blending them with a the magic of her own, Nikki's books are definitely one to read if you want the perfect mix of Poirot and Potter. Thanks Chicken House for the finished coffee. The tagline of the next book, How to Be Brave by Daisy Mae Johnson out on the 1st of July has captured my attention completely and I bet it'll get yours too. Some stories are about adventure, some are about heroes, some are about ducks. This one is about all three. Who wouldn't want to read on after hearing that? In this one, we are introduced to Calla North and her mum Elizabeth, who live a life that's far from normal. When Elizabeth says yes to a once-in-a-lifetime trip to save a small brown duck, she sends Calla to the best place she knows, the School of the Good Sisters. Staffed by nuns whose preferred subjects include light aircraft maintenance, camouflage skills and cake. Lots of cake. Calla is about to discover her bravery and a whole lot more. Thanks Pushkin Press for this beautiful finished copy that looks perfect for fans of classically told adventure stories like the Murder Most Unladylike series or Mallory Towers. Ahoy there! We all love a good pirate story and this next one looks like it's certainly going to be that. In Quintana and the Captain's Curse by Susan Brownrigg, out on the 1st of July, we follow Quintana who has grown up listening to stories of life at sea from her pa, an ex-pirate turned pet shop owner. But when a tall ship that goes by the name of the Nine Sails berths at Pirate Island, she soon joins the crew aboard for a treasure hunt she'll never forget, sailing away to Madagascar. Not only is this book awash with a world of pirates, but it also introduces us to the animals of the island, such as the mouse lemur, elephant bird and eye eye, which adds a lovely conservation angle to the storytelling of this. Thanks you clan for a finished copy of this book that I can't wait to hop aboard for. Listified by Andrew Petty and Andres Lozano out on the 1st of July is a book that promises to blow your mind, and blow your mind it does. Before even opening the cover, just from the look of it, you'll want to have this front and centre featuring on your bookshelf as it is jam-packed with factual lists of everything you could possibly want to know, including the human body, dinosaurs, amazing animals, marvellous inventions, game-changing people, the human world, planet Earth and outer space. I'll be recommending this to so many readers, but especially those who love reading the Guinness World Records books and Christopher Lloyd's Absolutely Everything and his Britannica All New Children's Encyclopedia. Huge thanks Britannica Books for this stunning book. We're all feeling football fever at the moment with the Euros 2020 tournament currently going on. And if you're looking for your football fix this month, then our beautiful game by Lou Quenzler out on the 1st of July will be the book for you. Inspired by the incredible true stories of the female football legends who rose to fame as women's football flourished in the years following the First World War, this one follows Polly Knapp, who wants to kick a ball about. However, being a working class girl, she's expected to stay home and help her mother, especially now with the men fighting in the trenches. But Polly, who echoes the life of the famous footballer of her time, Lily Parr, is determined to do whatever it takes to fulfil her dream and show the world that football is not just for boys. I really can't wait to read more of this book that I've just started because it shows what can happen when people's attitudes start to shift and change and the lifelong legacy of ladies like Lily. This book is especially important as it also marks the centenary of the 1921 FA ban of females playing football which remained in place for over 50 years. How shocking! Big thanks to Faber for the finished copy. I'm a big, big fan of science fiction, so I'm especially excited to see Skywake Invasion from screenwriter, film critic and gamer himself, Jamie Russell, coming out on July the 1st. In this one, we meet 15-year-old Casey Henderson, who is obsessed with the smash hit game Skywake. 
However, little does she know that it's actually an alien training tool created by a mysterious extraterrestrial species. When the aliens strike and start abducting the best gamers to fight for them in a distant alien war across the galaxy, Casey's gaming skills are put to the test as she and her online teammates must learn to work together in real life. From the cover alone, I can tell this is going to be one full of action and adventure that is going to keep readers hooked and wanting more. Thanks, Walker Books, for sending me a copy. In Song of the Far Isles from Costa Book Award shortlisted author Nicholas Bolin, out on the 1st of July, Oran lives on Little Drum, where music is everything. Every islander has a birth instrument and a life song, and the ancestors linger to hear the music. But when the Duchess arrives from the mainland, bringing with her orders of silence, she threatens the very soul of the community and their existence. As Oran discovers more about the music that surrounds her, she hears of a mythical instrument that has the power to change hearts and minds. Will it be powerful enough to change either or both of those of the Duchesses? From its cover, I can tell that this is going to be a deeply atmospheric story showcasing the strength of music. Thanks, Chicken House, for the beautiful finished copy. In 2019, there was a very special book published called Can You See Me, written by co-authors Libby Scott and Rebecca Westcott. This book, at least in my eyes, changed the landscape of children's literature and its perspective of looking at autism, especially from a child's perspective, because of the moving and personal diary entries by Libby, inspired by her own experiences and how she sees the world, which added so much authenticity. So I'm absolutely thrilled to see the prequel to Can You See Me and its sequel, Do You Know Me, called Ways to Be Me, being published on July the 1st. Taking place before both books, this one follows Tally through her autism diagnosis in her final year of primary school. As Tally struggles at home and in school, she feels like she's trying to be lots of different people and none of them are her. So when mum and dad want to take her to a doctor and she keeps hearing that word, autistic, she just wants to be left alone and not made to feel different. But everything is about to change. Both previous books should be read by every teacher, parent and child because they provide such a powerful lesson in empathy that will help everyone. And as a primary school teacher myself, this book is one I have been waiting for, as I just know it too is going to be outstanding. So thanks Scholastic for the finished copy. Out on the 6th of July is Sunflower Sisters, the first in a new uplifting picture book series by Monica Singh Gangotra and Michaela Dias Hayes about colorism and sisterhood, which centers around best friends Amrita and Kiki. After experiencing pressure and negative comments from Auntie, about the shade, tone and darkness of their skin, the two best friends become more curious about why these comments are made. Thanks to the love and protection from their mums, whose unconditional love empowers the two of them to shake off the outdated views of their auntie and embrace their skin exactly the way it is. With an in-depth explanation of what colorism is, why it is bad and what we can do to change this, this book is one that should be read by all because of the brilliant way that it makes its readers realize that they don't have to change to fit in and believe they are beautiful just the way they are. I really don't want to spoil the ending, but the ending for me is the absolute best part to show the sisterhood of these two. Big thanks to Outlook Press for sending me this gorgeous book. Next up is All the Money in the World by Sarah Moore Fitzgerald out on the 8th of July. One day, you're broke. The next, you have all the money in the world. What would you do? It sounds perfect, right? Wrong. This one follows 15-year-old Penny who longs for something better. Better than her small damp flat. Better than her bullying classmates and uninterested teachers. Better than the misery and poverty she feels day in and day out. So when a huge sum of money promises a lot of change and opportunities for Penny, she feels her luck is in. But at what cost will all this be? Can she buy happiness? Mixing messages about identity and privilege combined with unlikely friendships. This sounds perfect for those who enjoy books like Millions by Frank Cottrell Boyce. Thanks Hachette for the finished copy. Also out on 8th of July is The Battle for Raw by Jenny McLachlan and Ben Mantle, the finale in the epic The Land of Raw trilogy. Reunited with Rose and Arthur, we are back in Raw on a voyage that takes them further than they've ever been before, beyond the end. It promises to be an amazing adventure full of secrets, surprises and fairies with fangs. But then, a mysterious storm changes everything. Leaving them shipwrecked on a strange island, they make a shocking discovery. Could this be the end of Raw? 
I've absolutely adored reading this fantasy series that reminds me of Narnia, and I know you will too. So read all three if you haven't already, as it is guaranteed to make you believe in magic. I'm really looking forward to reading Between Sea and Sky by Nicola Penfold, out on the 8th of July, which is set in a near future where a series of environmental disasters has left much of the country underwater. This one is told through the dual narratives of Nat and Pearl, who live two very different lives at sea and on land, but whose worlds collide when they have to spend the summer together. With untold secrets between them and strict rules and regulations governing their every move, will they risk it all to keep each other safe? If you've read Nicola's books like Where the World Turns Wild, you'll know how acutely aware she is in her writing about how the future of our world could look, especially if we don't take climate change seriously. And in this one, she's even more thrilling and thought-provoking. Big thanks, Little Tiger, for the finished copy. Out on 8th of July, Bin Boy by Tom Vaughan and Emma McCann looks like it's going to be a right laugh. When Billy is bullied at school and the bully throws the contents and the bin at Billy's head, he has no idea how this will all turn him into an accidental superhero sensation called Bin Boy, who must save the world after discovering his stepdad is an evil supervillain. But it does, and with this, things become a whole lot more complicated than he's used to. Suddenly, with the fate of his world on his shoulders, can Bin Boy defeat the odds and save his family and the entire world? Together with the illustrations of Emma McCann, who is best known for illustrating the Anisha Accidental Detective books written by Serena Patel, this book doesn't just look funny, but is also one that tackles big topics like blended families, grief and bullying. Thanks Scholastic for the shiny finished copy. Meet Bumble and Snug, the bestest of friends, in Bumble and Snug and the Angry Pirates by Mark Bradley, out on the 8th of July. In this full-colour graphic novel that's illustrated so brilliantly bright and bold, join them on a funny imaginative adventure whilst they encounter some very angry pirates, unicorns, ghosts and lots of other magical creatures, learning about the world outside and inside along the way. There have been lots of graphic novels published for older readers recently, so I'm really happy to see this one that is slightly shorter and as such is just perfect for younger readers and readers who are starting to enjoy stories independently. Big thanks to Chet for the finished copy that will be my next recommendation for fans of the Narwhal and Jelly and Dogman series. The next book in the award-winning Anisha Accidental Detective series, Granny Trouble by Serena Patel and Emma McCann comes out on 8th of July. And if you're as big a fan as I am, you'll be super excited for more fabulously funny mysteries. This time, Anisha and Milo have been looking forward to this half term for what feels like forever as they've got exciting plans to go to the National Space Centre. But when a super famous, mega expensive diamond that was on display has been stolen, can Anisha and Milo go undercover to prove that Granny Jazz is innocent and be super sleuths to solve the crime? Thanks Osborne for the finished copy. Polly Hoeyen is one of my favourite writers with books like Boy in the Tower, so I'm over the moon to see her back with the highly anticipated How I Saved the World in a Week out on the 8th of July. In this one, Billy's mum is not like other mums. She has been teaching him survival techniques for years, like how to make fire, build shelter and find food, often taking him out of school on adventures to practice. But it seems she is becoming increasingly obsessed, which concerns Billy a bit, and it feels almost like she is preparing him for some future event. One day, when she goes too far, Billy is sent to live with his dad who he's barely met. Missing his mum and practising the rules of survival that he's grown to know, the world changes forever. People known as the Greys change into zombie-like creatures with grey skin and start to take over, leading Billy to flee the city he calls home and putting all the survival skills he's learnt to the ultimate test. Thanks Simon & Schuster for the finished copy. I can't wait to see what Polly has for us in store with this one. I really enjoy reading illustrated fiction and this is why Kate on the Case by Hannah Peck out on the 8th of July features in this video, with its witty two colour illustrations, colourful cast of characters and setting worthy of Agatha Christie. In this one we follow young reporter in training Kate and her mouse accomplice Rupert who are on board a train to visit Kate's mum in the Arctic. But as soon as the train departs, mysterious things start happening. Be prepared for delicious twists deciphering clues and deciding on who the suspect is. Thanks Piccadilly Press for the finished copy.
Also out on the 8th of July is Kiki Kalira Breaks a Kingdom by Sangu Mandana. Kiki has always been a bit of a worrier, and recently her anxiety has been getting out of control. But one thing that has always soothed her is her drawing. Kiki's sketchbook is full of fantastical doodles of the Hindu myths and legends her mother has told her since she was small. However, one day her sketchbook's common effect is broken when her mythological characters begin springing to life and Kiki is pulled into the mystical world she has drawn. There she discovers the band of rebel kids who protect the kingdom, as well as an ancient monstrous god bent on total destruction. Kiki must overcome her fear and anxiety to save both worlds, the real and the imagined, from his wrath. But how can a girl armed with only a pencil defeat something so powerful? Big thanks Hachette for the beautiful finished copy that I'm super excited to start reading. From one of the UK's most acclaimed spoken word artists, Stephen Camden, comes his first novel in a new illustrated series for middle grade readers with My Big Mouth out on the 8th of July and illustrated by Shante Timothy. When an impulsive lie gets out of hand, 10 year old Jay discovers the difference between lying and storytelling and the highs and lows of school life. But with being the coolest kid in the school comes big costs. And as things spiral out of control for Jay, can the most unlikely person help him learn the most important lesson of all? I get asked a lot about what is the book that I'd recommend to Diary of a Wimpy Kid, David Walliams and Tom Gates fans. My answer is now this. So thanks Macmillan for the finished copy. Next is Mystery of the Night Watchers by A.M. Howell, out on 8th of July, which tells the story of a global event set at a time that divided scientific and public reactions. It's May 1910, and as the blazing Halley's Comet draws close to Earth, speculation and rumour are running high as to what the effects will be. Scientists, journalists and the public all seem to be spreading some kind of fear and scaremongering between themselves, and no one has any idea about what will happen next. When Nancy is uprooted to live with a grandfather she's not met before, she's left in his house with every curtain drawn and no one knowing they are there. After discovering the house's secret observatory one night, she sees her mother and grandfather leaving the house. But where are they going? A.M. Howell is such a naturally talented writer and I have no doubt that this book will match The Garden of Lost Secrets and The House of 100 Clocks. Thanks Osborne for sending me a finished copy. I don't usually talk about independently published books but I've made an exception for Rory Hobble and the Voyage to Halligoggin by Maximilian Hawker as it looks out of this world. Out on 8th of July, this one is a science fiction own voices story about a character with OCD who one day when gazing through his telescope sees something impossible in the sky. Mysterious lights which are definitely not of earthly origin. When his abusive mother is abducted, Rory together with his spacefaring social worker must travel beyond the earth to chase those mysterious lights to the ends of the solar system. Using all of his courage, can he help himself to begin to overcome his OCD and decide whether he wants to rescue his mother if he gets the chance? A personal thanks to Maximilian for sending me a copy of this book, crowdfunded through Unbound. Now, if you've been following my reviews over the last year or so, you know how big of a fan I am of The Ship of Shadows by Maria Kuznia, a swashbuckling, sweeping adventure of sword fights, sea monsters, secret maps, and a super kick-ass all-female crew of pirates. So to see the sequel, Secrets of the Stars, on the horizon on the 8th of July makes me delighted. In this second thrilling adventure for Alea and the rest of the crew, they are eager to embark on a new adventure to find the second piece of the missing magical map. But they soon find themselves panicking and time is running out fast. After experiencing some strange visions, Alea realises that someone is trying to tell her something. But can she trust this new knowledge? Big thanks to Mia and Puffin for sending me this gorgeous finished copy that came in its own treasure chest. One of the books I really enjoyed reading last year was The Wild Way Home by Sophie Kirtley and another thrilling time slip adventure beckons with The Way to Impossible Island out on 8th of July. Born with a serious heart condition, 
Dara has been waiting for his big operation forever, and this summer it's finally going to happen. But when the op is delayed again, Dara's dream of rowing out to the island in the bay all by himself is also delayed. Feeling frustrated, he snaps as he realises it's impossible. However, Dara's sea journey is not quite suspended, especially after finding a girl from the Stone Age hiding in the boat shed. What could she be doing here? I can't wait to read this, especially as Dara is the younger brother from Sophie's debut children's book, The Wild Way Home. So thanks Bloomsbury for the finished copy. Lastly, for the 8th of July is Wild Child, A Journey Through Nature, a glorious family-friendly guide to encourage us all to get outside and explore and enjoy the natural world by award-winning activist and conservationist Dara McAnulty and illustrated in full and vibrant colour by artist Barry Falls. Beginning in Dara's very own back garden as he takes us on a tour of his hills, woods and ponds, pointing out his favourite animals, flora and fauna for us all to see as well as combining his expert explanations about migration, metamorphosis and classification. Finishing each chapter with advice and instructions about how to follow the countryside code when out and about, this book is a real love song to our world and how we can love it whilst living in it. Huge thanks Macmillan for sending me this absolutely stunning book. As we near the end of the month, look out for A Different Sort of Normal by Abigail Balf out on 22nd of July. Told through the author's remarkable words and just as remarkable illustrations, this book is about one girl's journey growing up autistic and the challenges she faced in the normal world. Sharing her stories through childhood and adulthood, from memories to family and friendships, as well as explaining so articulately about autism, neurodiversity and emotions, this is a book for absolutely everyone and is definitely a book that the world needs right now for its individuality, for its understanding, and for its empathy that it's just brimming with. Thanks so much, Puffin, for sending me a copy. It's one of the best factual books I've read. So these are the books I'm most excited about reading this month. Let me know in the comments below which children's books you're looking forward to reading, particularly from those featured in this video, or any others you've got your eye on. As always, keep reading, and I'll see you in the next video.